What's up, TexMTB? I know you guys haven't seen me in a while, but I am here at the Bike Cave in San Marcos, Texas. Show you guys around. Um, this is where I work at the moment, but for today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to dial in your mountain bike. So for the demonstration bike for today, I have this uh, Mongoose mountain bike behind me. Um, it's not the most high quality bike around, but it has like cable shifters, cable brakes, everything of that sort. So um, just for stuff like this, I'm gonna show you how to dial in all the components on it and get it running as it should. So let's go ahead and get this video going. So here's the bike we're gonna be working with here today. So in future videos, I can kind of upgrade and go to like higher quality bikes, but this is just gonna be the one that we are starting with for our first little video here. So it's gonna need a pretty decent rebuild. Um, I need to put a shifter on it, as you can see. Um, I did already get cable housing ahead of time. Um, I can show you guys how to do that as well though. But um, yeah, so gonna need some grips. Everything's gonna be dialed in. Brakes, as you can see, go all the way to the bar. That is not supposed to be like that. Um, shifter obviously gonna have to hook that up uh, hook it up in the rear as well so as you can see this thing's gonna need some work but I'm gonna show you guys every little bit and how to get everything perfectly dialed in so let's get it all right so to start this video off what we're gonna start with is getting all these shifters set up so before you even start dialing everything in what you want to make sure is that your cable housings for these little cable shifters you want to make sure that uh, there's nothing restricting them if, it, if your bike's been sitting outside for a while and it's just getting kind of old and crusty, these will rust up on the inside and then the cable's not gonna move. But as you can see, this moves just fine. It's pretty smooth and um, that's all that matters. I did already replace the ones in the front though. So to do that, I mean, really just to get the length, you get your thing of cable housing. You kind of just lay it up next to the bike about how long you think you're gonna need it, trim it, and you can uh, slowly go shorter and shorter if it's too long, but just don't cut it too short to begin with. And then for the bars, um, when you're setting up cable housing to these shifters, what I like to do, say if you're like putting cable housing on this shifter right here, um, what you wanna do, turn the bars this way and kind of wrap the housing all the way around to the first connection point. So what that does is kind of make sure that it's not too short so you can still turn your bars and you're not gonna stretch the cable housing or tear anything off and simple as that. So let's go ahead and get started on the shifters. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, we are missing the front shifter for the front derailleur. So I've picked out this one here from the shop. It's a, just a pretty generic SRAM one, but uh, I've already kind of halfway disassembled it. So take out this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out this cable because it's a little bit kinked and stuff. You want a perfectly uh, smooth and straight cable so that way it doesn't get uh, stuck in your cable housings. So let's go ahead and do that. Basically, I'm just going to pull this cable up through here, take it out, pop a new one in, and reassemble it. On with these are normally three millimeters or 2.5 millimeters depending on the uh, brand and whatnot so that's that and we already have the cable housing uh, pre-installed here it is just connected right down here so we're gonna go ahead run this cable through this continue to run it all the way down to this bottom derailleur so i will show you guys um, another important thing about this here in a second Okay, so here's the thing about the front derailleur I was talking about. So depending on the style of your front derailleur, the cable can either wrap around the bottom of the frame and the cable can come up like this and put a downward uh, pressure on it. Or in the way this one's set up, it just comes straight from the top and connects here and pulls up on it. Now, the big thing about this is you have to make sure the cable is on the correct side. So right here, it's on the right side. That'll help uh, pull it up a little easier. Uh, if, if I were to wrap the cable around the left side of this bolt, it would not work the same. It would it would actually struggle to work and maybe not even work at all. So make sure it's set up like that. That could be an issue if you have that set up on your bike. But um, yeah, and then over here again, like I said, cable housing, the way I tested it is just kind of move it around like this and see how the housing is still, uh, still fine. It's not ripping anything off. Bars can still turn freely. That's uh, pretty important. Okay, so with the cable prepped and ready to go here on the derailleur, there's two tools you're gonna need to tighten this down and get it properly tensioned. So one is obviously gonna be the correct size wrench. This one's gonna be a nine millimeter. Normally they're nine or 10 millimeter uh, nuts here. 
and then the other one is going to be called a fourth hand now a fourth hand is going to be one of these tools right here and basically how this works is the cable goes at this top part this grabs it by squeezing and once you do that you can stretch the cable uh, to any length as so and get the tension correct so by not having this properly tensioned or adjusted, this can cause issues not allowing you to shift to say the biggest uh, ring or even the smallest, depending on how it's set up. So uh, to properly install this, shift this all the way forward. So that way it's uh, what would be normally the smallest gear down here. And then you wanna use this tool and this can be done by hand. It's just very difficult, but yeah, you wanna use this tool here to stretch it to the proper tension and then just simply just tighten that down while this is being tensioned. And you can also lock this like that to keep tension. All right, and then once that's done properly, uh, you'll be able to shift through all three gears. Can't really do it with one hand, but also for fine tune adjustments, that's what this right here is for. So by twisting it to the left, you can slightly add more tension to the cable and to the right, you can make it less uh, or more loose. So yeah, that's about it. Okay, so once that's all wired up, there's the second one, the third, all the way back down to the smallest, and works just like that. And these brakes aren't great, but we'll get to that here in a second. Okay, and I'm not going to bore you guys too much with the rear derailleur here, but everything is going to be the exact same leading up to this as far as cable housing and everything. But then you'll get the fourth hand, pull this down this way to give it tension, tighten it down, and you can make your fine adjustments with this right here, just like the front derailleur. And then as well as adjust your limit screws, which um, I'll see if they need to be adjusted or not. But um, these basically just limit your derailleur from going too far this way or too far that way. So pretty simple. And yeah, there also are the limit screws on the front derailleur. Um, these, you really only need to use them if your derailleur goes too far to the left and then starts rubbing in the tire. You can see it's kind of close, but it's still good to go. And then um, use the high one if it goes too far past this and your chain's causing it to fall over the side, but that's very, uh, very rare to happen. So yeah. And uh, one more thing here, I do wanna show you guys these limit screws in action. So as you can see, this chain right here is kind of pushing against the side of the derailleur a little bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up here to the limit screws. I'm going to adjust the L screw and by simply, here we go, by simply tightening this, Watch this here. Might be hard to see on camera, but that derailleur is very slowly moving outward. And just like that, I can kind of get it barely off the chain and it's good to go. All right, so the cable is tightened down here, but I want to give you guys an example of how to use the little um, twister on the shifter there. So whenever I shift from this gear to this gear, it actually wants to skip it and go straight to here, which means I have too much cable tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply just going to turn this to the right a little bit, a little ways, and that should fix my issue just like that. And now it won't go from here to here. It'll go from there to there as it should. And just as I said, right up there to the second one. Okay, so with both shifters and the derailleurs all set up and good to go, uh, fully functional, we're gonna go ahead and start on the brakes now. I'm gonna show you guys um, a few of the adjustment screws that you're gonna be using on the brakes to get them all dialed in and good to go. So let's do it. Okay, so starting off, you're gonna wanna make sure that your wheel is uh, relatively true. It doesn't need to be completely perfect, but um, just look at this here. That's the brake pad, that's the rim. Just make sure it's uh, true enough to where it's not going to rub it while spinning around. So as you can see, it looks pretty straight. So this is going to be your brakes right here. And this screw is how you attach the brake pads. This is actually pretty important because this has a lot of adjustment in it. You can turn the brake pads uh, 360 degrees around, tilt them, whatever direction, uh, and as well as back and forth. So getting these in the right spot is crucial. And I'll go over that in a bit on how to do that. And then right here, these are just for taking them on and off. Uh, you're probably not gonna be touching those. And then this right here is gonna be the brake spring tension. So these, these actually do matter a lot. So if one side is a lot tighter than the other, what's gonna happen is your brakes are gonna tilt like this. So as you can see, it would rub the pad on that side, but it'll be off on this side. So you wanna have even spring tension on the brakes so that it sits right in the middle 
um, so they're not touching on both sides of the rim. So simple as that. And uh, we will get into um, other stuff here in a second. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and change out this cable. Doesn't look to be in the best of shape. Um, probably could use a little refresher. One more thing here with the uh, spring tension. So you've got the screws as I showed you before, but on some frames such as this one, let me see if I can zoom in on it. Um, up in here, there's three different holes to put the spring uh, in. So there's one to the left of it, one to the right, and then one in the middle that that little uh, nub is sticking out of. And so by taking the whole brake off and putting it back in these different holes, you can make the springs even tighter or looser that way. But it is recommended if, uh, if both of these are in still fine shape that you put them both on the same one and probably the middle one. So I already loosened this, but I'm just gonna swap this cable out just for myself. If yours, uh, if yours does look like this, it's still completely usable. It's just gonna make it easier on me here. But really the main thing is as long as you can pull your brake lever and it doesn't get stuck or anything, you are good to go. So don't worry about it. So if by chance you do need to change your brake cable though, it is quite simple. You literally um, loosen the bolt back there so the cable's free. If, any, if there's any frayed wires, chop them off. And then uh, you pull the brake back. You just pop out this little uh, metal chunk right here that's connected to the cable. You pop a new one in, thread it through your cable housing and back where it went and you're good to go. Okay, so now that this cable is back in the right general area before we uh, set it all up, what I'm going to go uh, go ahead and do here is make sure the brake pads are in the correct place. But as you can kind of see, these are not. They're going a little bit past the rim. You kind of want the whole thing making contact to get the best braking possible. And these have kind of worn out in a weird way because of that, how they were set up before. But um, we're going to make do with what we got here um, and go ahead and set those both up. So let's do that. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a two-handed job here, so I won't be able to film the whole process, but you want to kind of just get the brake and press it against the wheel and then line up the brake pad right where you want it while pushing pressure on it to make sure it's perfectly uh, parallel to the rim and then keep your fingers kind of keeping it in place as you tighten down this uh, little bolt right here, which is going to be a five millimeter Allen wrench and it's simple as that. So just keep pressure on it, keep it in place and tighten it down. So once that's complete, basically, as you can see, pad is good to go on both sides. Good to go. So all we gotta do now is tighten it down and then possibly adjust the spring tension. We may or may not have to, but that's all we got left. So when it comes to tightening it all down, we have the fourth hand again. If you can't tell by now, this tool is basically a necessity for adjusting cable brakes or uh, cable shifters. I've used it for literally everything so far. So definitely invest in one of these if you don't have one, uh, it's a lifesaver. But uh, yeah, we have the tension about right. So there's a little gap between both pads, which is just as you want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down and get it all good to go. Okay, and just like that, everything is tightened down and the brakes are good to go. So wheel is spinning. And I'd say that's a good pull right there. Still leaves room for the fingers on the grip and completely stops the wheel just fine. So that is exactly how you do it. And oh, one more thing to mention, uh, same as these shifters, it's got these things right here to adjust cable tension. So if you want your brakes to be a little bit tighter, so like less pull, so instead of saying pulling from here, maybe you wanna pull it like this far maybe instead of all the way over here, what you would do is just twist it to the left, more, more tension with uh, less pull. So simple as that. Um, that's about all I've got for y'all. So yeah, that is about all I've got for y'all today. The front brakes are gonna be the exact same as the rear. So there's no point in showing you guys two times in a row if it's literally the same thing. It's pretty self-explanatory once you've seen the back. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, I hope that came in handy for y'all. Um, if y'all want me to, we come across a few different types of bikes around here. So I can maybe do like tutorials with road bikes or if we get any nicer bikes in uh, with maybe hydraulics and stuff or anything like that, I can give you guys tutorials on how to fix it, get it all dialed in whatever y'all want to see. And also maybe in future videos, I'll also go over how to do stuff with the bottom bracket, how to rebuild those, um, how to swap them, etc. So basically anything uh, bike repair related, I know how to do. So just comment down below if you want to see anything specifically. And uh, yeehaw Cowboys, thanks for watching. Yeah.